Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm just going to talk about a... Well, what I've started doing is I've started reorganising some of my folders of templates. Like, a lot of these are now well out of date. Things have changed in the way that I operate. So, I mean, the miscellaneous folder is alright. Separators and things like that. But, and the buses. I mean, we've got this old folder here, but I'll probably delete that. Don't need any more. Um, the folder group. <laughs> See, now that's no. That's not needed anymore. But yeah, I mean, I've got my eight buses. And the. They run into the submaster. And then what can happen is I can put, for example, an EQ and compressor on there. As like a master chain and say I've got an instrument so what I'll do is I'll insert the template I'm going to talk about today which is this world it's a fame template it is we'll just minimize that for now um so once I've recorded with this I will then add it into one of these buses and then what can happen is it can run through the master chain. But sometimes that master chain can be really heavy on the CPU and unsuitable for live performance. So when I'm tracking, I will have it outside of the buses. And on the master track I'll have no effects at all. Therefore, it's going from whatever effects I have on here, straight through to a totally empty master track. And Anything that is complete that I want to go through the submaster with the effects on will be in here, so they will still run through that, but the input track won't be running through them, so it'll be a lot lighter. For the live input, it'll just go straight through. So if this were a guitar track, I might have an amp modeler and a reverb and a compressor, you know, my stomp effects and things like that, but we'll talk about that as another time. So here we are, this is the template and we have Keyscape and I've talked about this plugin before but we have T-Rax Fame Studio Reverb there and they're all in a folder track called Ambience because we have a room and we have a chamber but we also have a plate in there as well. So then we can blend them three independently and then we have a overall master fader for the whole of the ambience. So if I've got a project with a lot going on and I forgot to save, <laughs> which I sometimes do when I'm just rapidly doing things. If I add these in, bang, they come straight in, no load time, no chance of crashing, and then before I bring them on I think, oh yeah, um, probably a good time to save, so I'll then control the nets, and then I start bringing these in. Okay, so all of the plugins have now been brought online, so we open up Keyscape, and we have the reverb turned off, because I'm using uh, Fame Studios for that. So if I play now, we'll just hear the dry whirl it, so... We have a little bit of the tremolo. And we'll probably bring chorus in as well. Ooh, sorry about that. <laughs> My microphone's kind of in the way. So there's the dry sound. But then we have the T-Rex Fame Studio Reverb in Studio A. And it's on the organ keys position and focused mode. Bumped up the input a little bit and changed it to vintage mode, but I haven't changed anything else. Oh, and these sends, just before I bring one of these in. The sends are pre-fader. So it doesn't matter what volume level the dry's at. We're still getting the same amount sent to each of the reverb auxiliary tracks. For example, if I turn this to its default setting, now nothing's coming through the room track, so pre-fader. And this way I can have just room on its own, or play it on its own. Or 
little chamber on its own. So now let's bring in the dry again. So room and dry. Brings in some girth. Clip in a little bit. In fact, no, 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 no. Bring that down. And then bring in a bit of plate. And some chamber as well. Probably should have made sure my microphone was in a better position before I started demoing that. But it's not about the plane, really. So obviously, none of them were clipping, but when summed all together, it was causing the ambience track to clip. But then, once we've got this mix between these that we're happy with, blend into taste. I do like a bit more chamber, and a bit more play, and just a bit more of everything, really. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> I've been told you can have too much of a good thing, but I wouldn't know anything about that. So yeah, that's how I've set up the Wurlitzer template. Obviously, with the different blend of ambience tracks, you can get a lot of different tonal variety, and that's before you even start editing the plugin itself. So we could give it some EQ. So when we're hitting harder, yeah, so if we have that full up and I hit the key hard, changes the timbre. Probably a bit too extreme there.
So yeah. I like it a lot. I like the whirl it's a So that's how I set up my template for the whirl it's a Anyway, thank you for watching. And as always, if you like this content, feel free to comment, like, share and subscribe. You know the deal. Until next time, cheerio.